Today we're going to be looking at a Protoss vs Protoss build. This is much different than the safe defensive build I showed a couple videos ago. This build is very aggressive. Um, I think you guys are going to love it. And I wanted to give you guys two options depending on your playstyle. Um, so one defensive build and one aggressive build. I think it's really important when teaching to not force my own style on you guys. So I try to do this in my coaching as well. And if you're interested in StarCraft 2 coaching, you can contact me on Discord or check out my website at www.hushangcoaching.com slash lessons. Also, just recently there is another way you can support Hushang Tutorials. If you guys are loving these videos, we now have plenty of community rewards you can unlock by using the join button, which is beside the subscribe button on the Hushang Tutorials homepage. We have a bunch of awesome tiers and I want to thank everyone who's already joined. Thank you guys very, very much. You guys are really helping to make content this year possible. And with that, let's get into the guide. Alright, so here we are in a game against the AI, just demonstrating the build order. We have a 14 pylon going down. If you want to know how to uh, read the build orders, go check out my 4 gate guide where I go through that one a little bit slower. And it follows a lot of the same features, so that one should be pretty helpful. But we'll go through it a little faster in this game, just so uh, my diamond plus students aren't getting bored. <laughs> Gate on 16, gas on 16 as well, or 17. Um, I've been doing 16 lately because I think you can mine this gas a little faster. So I actually think it's superior, even though I think I might be the only one doing that. So 16 or 17, they're both fine. Check for the cannon rush, same as we were doing in the safe PvP build. This is really mandatory um, if you want to defend any cannon rushes. And then with the same probe on 19 supply, you can grab your second gate and then go scout your opponent. Back at home, you can see that I've already been rallying these probes into the gases. So as soon as I got to 16 out of 16 on minerals, I started rallying into the gases. And you can grab your cyber on 21 supply. I just want to pause here for a sec. I'm actually rallying these in. You can see I'm switching it back and forth. You don't have to do this, but if you're a higher level player, let's say Masters Plus, this does give you a little extra gas by not going over um, two. So the third probe in the gas geyser actually mines very slightly less gas. But if you are, you know, lower than that, lower than diamond, uh, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter at all. And then on 22 supply, after the cyber core, you're going to grab a pylon. It looks like we're going to get supply blocked. It's pretty tight, but it's actually totally fine. You're not going to get a supply block there. And then this probe should arrive. You want to look around for some clues. I guess I'm not really doing this since this is the AI, but you want to look around for the clues that they are cheesing. If you don't know the clues, go check out the um, hour-long video. <laughs> <laughs> where I play versus 16 different cheeses and you'll get a, a lot of insight into what I'm looking for. Once your cyber finishes up, you're going to go double adapt to warp gate. And you can get your stargate right now with the next 150 gas. And I'm going to do that in this video, but just keep in mind that it is also pretty strong to hide your tech. So you might want to delay this. Um stargate in some cases especially if your opponent is in your base um, and just wait till they leave right and then throw it down and that way it's a little more ambiguous like are you going dark templar are you going um for a fast nexus into robo you know they just don't really know what you're doing all right after the first adept finish we're gonna make two more adepts we're actually gonna be making a ton of adepts with this build because they are the best unit to be aggressive with. So shade those across. Your opponent's going to have stalkers or adepts at the same time as you, by the way. So if you run to the, you know, the middle of the map, that's where they're going to meet you. So if you're playing against stalkers, and you can always do a pylon block at 225. Um, we covered that in the other video as well. So you should know what units they opened up with. And if they opened up with stalkers, then you don't really want to meet them in the middle. You'd much rather say shade over here. 
and then come into um, their main. So just be careful of that. All right, we're going to chrono boost the cyber one time. This is going to give you uh, the warp ins a little bit faster. And this is going to be important with this build. Okay, next step is to grab your nexus. So we have um, two adepts, and then we made another two adepts. Sorry, we made two adepts. We got warp gate, then we got the stargate, then we made two more adepts, and now we're expanding. Micro needs adepts a little bit on this side. We'll kind of ignore that for um, the build order. Start up your oracle. You can chrono boost this oracle if you like. And then you're going to uh, make two more adepts after the oracle. And after a pylon. So oracle, pylon, two adepts. Once these guys finish, we're going to warp in two more adepts on top of that. So it's going to be an eight adept, two oracle attack. It's super, super strong. You can get this out a little faster if you delay your nexus, but I think this version is uh, stronger, actually. So oracle's on the way. I think the best way to do this is to send the oracle into your opponent's main base. You can see here I have it shifted around the map. And then we'll go in with our adepts, kind of in a, a, a two-pronged attack, not at the same time. Or sorry, at the same time. And um, you should be able to get a ton of probe kills. So we have six adepts so far. We have one oracle. I'm not exactly sure what the best thing to do is here. I think you should maybe, um, I mean, it, it kind of depends on what your opponent does. So they're both, they both have merits. One is you could run this uh, oracle in right away and get some workers. Um, the other is you could wait for this second oracle to meet up and then go in together. So, yeah, try try both. Definitely in some situations, one's going to be better than the other. Crazy amount of adepts. <laughs> it is a big committal, though, so make sure your opponent is uh, expanding. You don't want to be doing this if they're still on one base, of course. You can see here, two adepts or uh, two oracles are meeting up. We have the eight adepts at the natural side, and we're going to shade in. And just before we go in, I want to point out, right before we moved in, I'm dropping a robo. This is just for um, afterwards. Okay, and you want to shade in. The beauty of this build, the reason this build is so good, is because the classic defense against adept shades is to build a shield battery or pylon to fully wall off their entrance. And the reason that this is so good is because that does not stop eight adepts. Um, the only way to really stop this is to build a gateway. And you kind of have to build it pretty early too, because if they just start the gateway now, you can actually still DPS that down, especially with the oracles. So yeah, very, very hard build to defend. Um, and yeah, that's why it's so good. So you can shade in here. You can even shade into the natural if you want. If there's a bunch of probes there, you can target sentries. It takes four adepts to one shot a sentry. So you, yeah, if you could target a sentry and kill probes if you have that much APM. And then at the same time, so you probably just want to like um, you know shade these in, target something, and then not micro them too much and focus more on the oracles because. These are the bad boys that are going to be getting the most damage. So focus your attention over here. Target one probe at a time. And the reason that this is so good is because these can bypass shield batteries. So as long as you attack at the exact same time, then you're going to kill the probe regardless of whether there's a shield battery or not. So very, very hard <laughs> for your opponent to defend this build. Um, that's pretty much it. Maybe let's just look at the defense a little bit. So if I go back here, I mean, you're going to focus on that attack in, your, in a real game, but this robo is going to be finishing up. And once your adepts die, you are really going to need to defend hard. So usually what I do is warp in stalkers and get a shield battery. This might not be the case in your game, depending on, you know, whether the, the adepts kill a bunch of units or, or whatnot, but you really don't want to die to a counterattack. 
and we've just thrown away you know eight adepts probably in this attack so if your opponent has like eight stalkers you're really going to need to make sure that uh, you're not going to die to the counter attack so throw down a shield battery maybe even throw down two in some cases um, chrono boost your immortal when you can and you can also probably bring back your oracles and put down a stasis ward in some cases so just really make sure you don't die to the counter attack because you're probably going to be up like 10 15 workers <laughs> at the end of this attack it's really really uh, strong okay and with that i think we're done with this guide of course you can transition uh, a number of ways but one of my favorites is to get a twilight council and uh, and go into blink stalkers all right hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to like it share it subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one Thank you.